Now, if you've been watching this show this week, this is something that you might have seen coming. This is something we have been watching percolate all week since Monday night. Late on Monday night, the White House put forward this order from the president announcing that President Trump had directed a number of documents related to the Russia investigation be declassified and released to the public. And this has been sort of a running theme in the Russia investigation since late last year. The president and pro-Trump Republicans in Congress demand, demand that the Justice Department and the FBI hand over internal law enforcement documents and communications from the investigation, from this open, ongoing investigation into the president and his campaign with regard to Russian interference in the election. Now, these demands that documents and, and communications from the ongoing investigation be opened up to the public and handed over, these demands clearly serve a couple of different purposes. I mean, first, at just a PR level, at a level of public impressions, making these demands helps the White House and pro-Trump Republicans create a storyline, particularly in the conservative media, that makes it look like law enforcement is doing something suspicious here, that the people who are involved in the Russia investigation have done something maybe wrong. They've definitely done something that they're trying to hide. Otherwise, why wouldn't they just hand over all these documents from their open investigation, right? Hashtag, release the memo. What are they hiding, right? So it creates this impression, oh, they're hiding something. Something must be wrong. They must have done something bad. That's one. Also, these demands for law enforcement sensitive and, and, and investigative materials from an ongoing investigation, it also just bluntly, plainly on its face, when they get this stuff, it provides information to the president's defense team and to other witnesses and potential subjects in the investigation. Any criminal defendant would kill for this, right? If you knew prosecutors were looking into you, were poking around in your business that they might have something on you, you'd kill or die to get a window into what prosecutors had on you while they're still building the case against you. That's gold. And for, for the president's defense and for the other legal teams caught up in this investigation, I'm sure it is very handy that the White House and congressional Republicans keep forcing into the public eye internal, confidential, classified documents from inside that ongoing investigation. But there's one other level at which those demands function, and you have seen this for months now. It's, it's, it's not subtle. It has been sort of clear from the beginning that these demands to the Justice Department, these demands to the FBI, they hand over all these sensitive and classified materials. It's been obvious since they started doing this that part of the aim when they make those demands is that they're hoping that law enforcement officials will say no, right? right? This is how we got impeachment articles drawn up against Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, right? This is, this is how we got the first calls from Congress, not just from the White House, that, that Rosenstein should be impeached or fired or otherwise removed from office, that Jeff Sessions should be fired or impeached or otherwise removed from office. These demands allow the president and pro-Trump Republicans in Congress to pound their chests and say, look at these terrible officials at the FBI and the Justice Department. They're not handing over these documents that we demanded. That's outrageous. They must be hiding something. That's outrageous. These officials are disobeying orders from the president. These officials are disobeying oversight efforts from pro-Trump Republicans in Congress. These officials must be fired. Well, what if these documents aren't getting handed over by these Justice Department and FBI officials because these are documents that really shouldn't be made public? What if handing over those documents would jeopardize national security, would put sources' lives at risk, would jeopardize programs and practices in law enforcement and intelligence collection that are crucial to keeping the country safe? What if it's just sensitive material from an active law enforcement investigation, which would impede that investigation if these materials were made public? Law enforcement officials don't just open ongoing investigations willy-nilly. There's a reason this stuff is kept close. And they know that. Right? The idea of demanding documents that really can't be handed over, the biggest idea there is to either force resignations in protest from law enforcement officials and intelligence officials who know that they have to refuse those demands, or just as well, maybe those officials don't resign in protest, maybe they stay in their jobs, but they say no, they refuse those demands, which then conveniently creates a pretext for the president to fire those officials for not following his orders or for not going along with oversight demands from his allies in Congress.
when the president on Monday night issued that order from the White House to declassify all these additional documents related to the Russia investigation. Congressman Adam Schiff, top Democrat on the Intelligence Committee, warned that that last dynamic was what was going on here. He said, quote, with respect to some of these materials, I have been previously informed by the FBI and Justice Department that they would consider the release of those materials a red line that must be crossed because releasing those documents and materials would compromise sources and methods. John McLaughlin's former CIA director, he's been making the same argument this week as Congressman Schiff has. This was his op-ed today in the Washington Post about why Trump must not declassify these materials. The last line of his op-ed is this, quote, if the president overrides his professional staff and insists on unredacted declassification, it would force some officials sworn to protect sources and methods of intelligence and law enforcement, it would force some officials to consider resignation. John McLaughlin was even more blunt about that, that on Twitter. He said, quote, this probably qualifies as the president's most serious assault on the justice system yet. Former CIA director. Wrong on so many levels for justice, law enforcement, intelligence. If he forces it all the way through, it ought to be a resignation issue for someone in justice. Period. And then he ends with this question. Maybe Trump's intention? Right. Maybe that's the idea. People say no, he gets to fire him. Or they say, no, I resign in protest. And he says, great, I've been looking forward to replacing you. Here's how this has unfolded over the course of the week, right? So Monday night, Trump gives this order to declassify all this stuff. On Tuesday, the president said online that he was basically very excited about these declassifications. He said they would prove that, quote, really bad things were happening at the FBI. Ooh, that was Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, the president admitted that he hadn't actually read any of these documents that he had ordered to be declassified. He told the Hill newspaper that even though he hadn't actually read any of this stuff, the reason he ordered it all declassified anyway is because he'd heard from people who he trusts that these are documents that really should be declassified. The complete list of people who he heard from, who he trusts on this issue, who apparently advised him to order these declassifications, that complete list was entirely made up of people who host television shows on the Fox News channel. I kid you not. So that's who's advising him on this matter. All week long, we've been waiting for the stuff to come out. Internal communications among FBI and Justice Department officials related to the Russia investigation. FBI interviews from the very start of the Russia investigation. Portions of the FISA application for his campaign advisor, Carter Page. The portions that the Justice Department has already said can't be safely unredacted. The president has been insist insisting regardless, just do it, unredact all of it. We've been waiting to see if that stuff would come out. We've been waiting to see if there would be resignations in protest or if there would be refusals from the Justice Department or the FBI. We've been waiting to see if the president might use those refusals as a pretext for firing senior Justice Department officials who he wants out of the way anyway. Well, today, the president said, never mind. The president today withdrew his demand that all these documents get declassified and instead said he would not push it anymore. He said he hopes the inspector general might look into it. According to multiple reports today, the president arrived at this decision today that he was going to cave, no longer demand the declassification of these documents. He arrived at this decision today after discussions with Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein who personally went to the White House to explain to the president the dangerousness of what he was doing in trying to make these materials public. If the point of this whole declassification showdown, as set up by Fox News hosts, if the whole point of it was to force a confrontation with Rod Rosenstein, to push Rod Rosenstein into saying no, push him into refusing the president's demands so the president could then fire him in response. When Rod Rosenstein personally went to the White House to talk to the president about this matter, the president appears to have blinked when it came to that confrontation. Rosenstein apparently told him, no, you can't let this stuff out. And the president, I think the script they thought he was going to follow at Fox News was that he would then stand up and say, well, you are fired. Instead, the president said, okay, okay then I will withdraw my request. If the president is still looking for a pretext to fire Rod Rosenstein, who of course oversees the Robert Mueller investigation. So if he was 
going to fire Rosenstein. He could install somebody else in that job to try to make the Mueller investigation go away. More on that later. If that was the goal here, the declassification gambit does not seem to have worked. The president does not seem to have had the, let's call it wherewithal, to go ahead with that plan. That was this morning. And then this happened. Hours after the president climbed down on that declassification thing, the New York Times decided to do this. Quote, Rod Rosenstein suggested secretly recording Trump and discussed 25th Amendment. Quote, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein suggested last year that he secretly record President Trump in the White House to expose the chaos consuming the administration, and he discussed recruiting cabinet members to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove Mr. Trump from office for being unfit. This article today from Adam Goldman and Michael Schmidt at the New York Times uh, has led to exactly what you would expect. Gleeful, insistent calls on the right, including from some of the president's closest advisors at the Fox News Channel, um, that, that this is it. Forget all of the other efforts we've come up with to try to fire Rod Rosenstein. These other efforts that failed, forget all the other efforts that failed to create a pretext to fire Rod Rosenstein. You can fire him now, Mr. President. Rosenstein oversees the Mueller investigation. You want to get rid of the Mueller investigation? You got to get rid of Rod Rosenstein. Here's your way to do it. Cite this New York Times piece and fire him now. Rosenstein was going to wire you, or wire himself, wire other officials going in to spy on you in the White House. Rosenstein was going to organize the cabinet to use the 25th Amendment to oust you from office. He was. Since the New York Times posted this story this afternoon, their reporters are definitely standing by what they have published. But both NBC News and The Washington Post have published their own versions of this story, um, which fundamentally contradict the whole point of the New York Times reporting. The Times is insisting that Rod Rosenstein seriously proposed wearing a wire surreptitiously recording the president inside the White House as part of a serious plot to prove the president's incompetence and get him out of office. The Times says their sources for that information are people who were briefed on the fact that Rod Rosenstein had said that to other officials and sources who were briefed on a memo that another FBI official fired Deputy Director Andrew McCabe supposedly wrote about this proposal from Rod Rosenstein. Those are their sources. NBC News and The Washington Post, however, say as of this afternoon that they, each of these news organizations has a source that was actually in the room when Rod Rosenstein supposedly made this proposal. And their source, who again was in the room, uh, says that when this happened, Rod Rosenstein was quite obviously being sarcastic. That's that NBC headline. Rosenstein joked about secretly recording Trump, Justice Department officials say. And you can see that the sub headline there, quote, which is, According to NBC's source, the actual quote, well, what do you want me to do, Andy? Wear a wire? That sarcastic quote attributed to Rod Rosenstein by someone who was in the room when he said it. The New York Times does not have a source who was in the room when Rosenstein said it. But nevertheless, they have now provided President Trump this headline and this fully cooked, fully baked New York Times approved headline inviting the president to fire Rod Rosenstein and thereby end the Mueller investigation on the basis of what Rod, Rod Rosenstein purportedly said he wanted to do to get the president out of office. Never mind the fact that people in the room say that he was apparently kidding. Uh, so I said we are waiting for a few shoes to drop tonight. If the president does fire Rod Rosenstein, regardless of the pretext he decides to use, uh, it's not exactly clear what would immediately happen to oversight of the Mueller investigation. We'll talk about that a little bit tonight with some people who very much understand how that would work. If the president does fire Rod Rosenstein, we do definitely expect one thing to happen outside the Justice Department, which is that we would expect nationwide widespread street protests uh, in very short order. Much more ahead tonight. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.